stand by my true dog, cause I am the ruler of my state of do da like Buddha Buddha da Buddha. I stand by my true dog. Hey, what's up everybody? I want to share with you guys the time that the spirit and energy of my uncle who had passed on came to me. And now I look back on it, this was a catalyst for me. Um, it was not the first time I experienced something in this full weight state that is considered beyond the veil or paranormal. But it is the first most intense and scary experience. I was remember I, when all this stuff was happening. I was really, really young. All this stuff was new to me. And even with me picking up on things and seeing things that would seem crazy and unlikely back then, but then would end up happening, meaning seeing beyond the veil. Um, even then, I wasn't recognizing it as a gift because I didn't really talk about it much. All I knew that I, all I knew is that I was different and I was doing something that was not normal. It was not and, and was very unusual. And I realized that people treated me differently, partly because of that. My mother used to look at me in a very frightening way when I would say or pick up on things. Um, so you can imagine what it was like for me. Okay, so anyway, at the time I was living with um, my cousin, who is the um, my first cousin Debbie. They know they watch my videos. They probably gonna get a kick out of this one, but they know about this. Um, um, her father, my uncle, had passed away about a year prior to this. I would say it was about a year, and when he passed. I was sleep in the room in the bed that he was in, right? And a little bit of backstory, my uncle was very much like my grandfather. He was a very staunch, no nonsense, don't play kind of guy, but he was also uh, like very kind, but he didn't show that a lot. And again, we we're talking about men who come from a particular time. They saw showing kindness and you know, being affectionate and showing their emotions as a detriment to their strength. But every now and then, my uncle would let that side show and he would smile a lot. We would see him smile and nobody knew what he was smiling about, but he would smile a lot. And looking back, I realized in his own unique way, my uncle took to me. He never articulated that. I feel like he took to me in a very unique kind of strange way looking back especially he would come and pick me up the most because he and his youngest son my my cousin rob we're close in age and he used to come and pick me up so he and i we used to play with with one another and when he would take rob out to buy shoes and clothes he would buy shoes and clothes and do things for me too and i realized he didn't do that kind of stuff with any of his other nephews at that time um, and so it, it made perfect sense for um, my cousin Debbie and I, we were inseparable at that time because it started when, um, when my uncle used to always come and pick me up with, uh, with the rest of the family. It was, uh, used to pick me up to come and spend time with uh, my cousin Rob, her, and the rest of the family. So anyway, coming back to the story, um, this particular day, and I wish I could document the exact date because I'm sure that has some very uh, the date itself would be very meaningful to this story but let's just say I had just gotten off the phone again it's always me after getting off the phone with somebody now I don't remember who I was talking to at this time but I know it was like like around three o'clock in the morning um, I got off the phone and again I'm in the bed that my uncle slept in when he was alive and he's been gone now about a, a year i lay down um 
I would always sleep with the covers like just a, like here to cover my eyes so the blackness so I have some blackness because if I see any kind of light or any kind of light that's filtering through it's hard it's hard for me to get to sleep so I used to really sleep with the cover like almost over my head but not quite so after I got off the phone and I like I said it was in, in 3 a.m. somewhere around there I laid down and pulled the covers over my eyes and I was lying there preparing to go to sleep when all of a sudden I feel like something was pulling, slowly pulling the covers back off me. And I, immediately I'm thinking it's Debbie or her, her daughter who was a really little girl at that time, Pebbles. I'm like, hey, what's up Debbie and Pebbles? I'm thinking immediately because we're the only three in the house at that time. So I put, snatched the cover off my head thinking to see one of them standing there playing with me. Nobody's there. Then I, I, I was like, oh, okay, maybe this is my imagine. Maybe I imagine this. So then I laid back down, pulled the covers over my head again. About two minutes later, I feel an obvious, like someone is slowly pulling the covers off of me. And it, it was obvious, right? So I look up and I sit up again. And I look around, because this time was more obvious than the first. So then I'm, I'm thinking, well, maybe they under the bed. Maybe they, so I got up and I look under the bed and looked in the closet. There was a closet near the bed. And I'm thinking, there's no way they could do that and be gone and, or hide that fast. So that doesn't make sense. So again, I shrug it off. I go lay back down, pull the cover of my head. Now this time, it was really obvious. It was like, like it, the covers were literally pulled down to about here. While I'm like, and I'm looking like, what in the hell? Now I'm getting scared. Then next thing you know, the VCR just start flicking on really, really fast. on a particular time I w I'm sure that time was significant um, I wish I could remember and, and recall the exact time it was that VCR was on the VCR was just flicking on and off really 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 fast now now I'm really getting really scared as hell then all of a sudden I see something like this I saw this video years ago I experienced this a bubble of energy was under the cover moving around underneath the cover now this time I jump up out of the bed and then it stopped and then the VCR stopped everything got quiet and I didn't want to say nothing because Debbie and her daughter they were in the room sleep and I didn't want to wake anybody up but I'm I'm obviously freaking out because I'm not imagining this so then I said okay it got quiet it stopped even though I'm rattled and I'm scared and confused, I still got back underneath the cover and laid down and I really couldn't get back to sleep. Now this is when it really, that bubble, like a ball of energy or air was underneath the cover shifting. The covers had risen up again and then I felt something like that energy move up my leg. That's when I jumped up and I ran in the room with Daddy and Pebbles we're sleeping. I woke daddy up and I shook it. I said, yo daddy, your daddy spirit is in the room. I know it's him. I feel it. He's messing with me. And my cousin daddy woke up. She was like, what? And I was like, I'm telling you. And I was telling her what was going on. And I was like, I was freaking out. And I asked her, I said, let me, and now I'm looking back on it. That was kind of like what happened with my nephew. When my nephew wanted to stay in the room with me. Um, I, I stayed in the room with them. I slept at the other end of the bed they were on. I did not go back in that room for a couple of days. Now, again, this is all a part of me waking up and getting into the getting on the next level of my own awakening and starting to work on myself and love myself so I can really get in tune with my gift and abilities. And again, my uncle and my grandfather, looking back, they played a very powerful role in this. They were helping to get me, wake me up, shake me up, and get me to move in my purpose. Now, my uncle came to me on the astral plane right around that time. And on this 
um, this man, he came to me later, years later, I'll do another video about that. But he gave me a message to tell Debbie, his daughter. When I told her that meant she knew exactly, it, it didn't make sense to me. When I told her, she knew exactly what it meant and, and you could tell she never really opened up to me about what it meant to her and it was not my place to know what it meant but it meant something to her she got it she knew i got that message from her father because i couldn't have guessed that and i could not have made it up it made perfect sense to her then that's when other people in my family, they passed over and I started getting used to it and they would come to me and they would relay a message to me that I didn't know anything of and I couldn't validate but when I would tell it to a loved one, they would freak out because they knew obviously something that um, I could not have guessed was given to me and, and validated um, from outside of conventional thinking. And so here's why my family and them they know that I, because they used to always say I was born with the veil over, I was the one born with the veil over my face. And the older I got and the more I started loving myself and accepting all that I am um, and, and really putting forth that, that concerted effort, just like a brother who had done a reading on me years before when he told me I had the exact same gift and he said, it comes and goes, but it will really come on when, when I start working on myself and love myself unconditionally. And that's exactly what has happened. So I just want to share that with you guys. I will share the story with my uncle giving me a warning on the astral realm and the time when my grandfather came to me on the astral realm and I didn't recognize him right away. So that's it. All right. Again. If you have not seen the video that I had done about my grandfather, please click on the video link below. And if you have not seen part two, if you have seen part one and have not seen part two, click on the video link below. All right, you all love beyond measure. Continue to question, learn, and grow. And happy travels, everybody.